hands on it, and it can't attack me. As long as I keep... Okay, just run, run, run. Get out of the way. Ow, no! Okay, keep my eyes on it. Keep my eyes on it. Oh, forget it. Run! 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 Ah, no, no! Okay. Run! Run! Oh, no, not the water! No, 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 no! Ah! So, how does it work? I'm running a clock that goes into an execute command for any skeletons with a score of angel of at least one. And uh, what that execute command is running is a test for any players inside this circle, so uh, like a radius of 25, uh, looking, let's see, for this circle, for the yellow circle, it's any people looking that way. And if true, it'll teleport the skeleton like one or two meters that way, the way that the player's looking. <laughs> and uh, as soon as that command is run, it'll activate a block data command, which will reset it so that the comparator won't always be lit. And anyway, the execute command is actually running, uh, there's four execute commands for this and they're running with an offset uh, of the skeleton by about 27 blocks, I think. So, like, even though the skeleton is standing here, uh, it'll be running the command as if the skeleton is standing here. So it'll be testing in this circle. And I have that for each circle around where the skeleton is. No matter where the, no matter where the skeleton is, it'll be essentially moving each of these circles and keep continually testing four players looking away from it. I then have two more commands running for each circle that test if a player is looking down, and if true it'll teleport the skeleton closer, also if the person is looking up. I'm also running an execute command for right where the skeleton's legs are, so that in testing for air, so that if, uh, if it's not air, the skeleton will teleport upwards, such as if whoops, move over some. So that if a skeleton teleports and goes inside of a block, it'll teleport to one up and be on top. The of command it. to summon the skeleton is quite long and uh, has a lot of different things that I've edited for it, such as the attributes. I made it so that it can't. It has a slowness attribute, so it can't move at all. Uh, I changed its health to be lower just so that when I'm in creative mode I can hit it w with one hit. Uh, I made it so that it's invulnerable, so if you're in survival mode or adventure mode you can't hit it, uh, it won't do any damage at all. Also if it's inside of a block it won't do any damage to it. I changed the attack damage to uh, 10, so if you have no armor it will take away half your health. Uh, pick up loot one, so in case you throw your sword, uh, custom name, make sure the name is visible at all times, sort of like the player name, uh, drop chances for zero, and the equipment, um, I have in full iron armor, plus on the head slot, I have, uh, like tall grass, I think it is, yeah, and that gives the sort of wings look to the skeleton. Everything needed to make the Weeping Angel work in a survival world is in inside this bedrock casing here. One of the, I guess, sort of bugs I suppose it has is wolves will attack it and when they do so it kind of loses the skeleton's focus on the player. So if I game mode 2 and then I move directly up to it, it won't hurt me because it's like because it's it's aggroed onto the wolves. A yeah, kind of happy accident that I hadn't planned is the tall grass being inside of the skeleton's head slot kind of acts as a barrier ow, in the s between the sun so that the skeleton won't burn up during the daylight. Anyways, that is the Weeping Angel from the Doctor Who television series. Um, as I said, if you want this download, uh, you can <laughs> if you want this world save, you can download it. Also, the MC Edit schematic for this uh, bitrock, uh, all the commands for it. 
Um, if you want more info, go ahead and ask questions in the comments, and go ahead and follow me on Twitter at quad9363 if you want. I mean, you don't have to. I'm not forcing you. Don't do it.